Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Environmental Finance Center's Wastewater Treatment Works educational video series. My name is AJ, and I am a research engineer with the Southwest Environmental Finance Center. Today's video will focus on advanced math related to activated sludge processes. We will be discussing how to calculate the food to microorganism ratio, which is also known as the F to M ratio, and supporting concepts. The F to M ratio is used to describe the amount of material available as a food source compared to the amount of bacteria in an activated sludge basin and is used by operators to adjust process controls to op optimize their treatment processes. It's frequently used to adjust the amount of oxygen supplied to activated sludge basins. So first we're gonna start off with a couple definitions. So like we mentioned earlier, the food to microorganism ratio or F to M ratio is the proportion of food as BOD or COD to the amount of microorganisms in a basin as mixed liquor volatile sus suspended solids, also known as MLVSS, and this F to M ratio is provided as a decimal. Where it's also important to understand what DO is, or dissolved oxygen, and it's the measured amount of oxygen present in water or wastewater. It is usually pumped into activated sludge basins using blowers and diffused into the water using membranes. It is represented as a concentration. Next, there's biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD, which is the amount of oxygen consumed by microorganisms as they break down organic material in wastewater. It is usually measured by a BOD-5 test, which measures the amount of oxygen consumed by a wastewater sample at 20 degrees Celsius over five days. This type of test gives the BOD as a concentration. Chemical oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen required to completely oxidize all the organic material in a wastewater sample. A strong oxidizer is used to measure how much oxygen is consumed during the decomposition of all the organics and inorganics in a sample. COD is typically greater than BOD, but the test to analyze for COD provides much faster results. It's also important to understand what mixed liquor suspended solids are, or MLSS, which is the concentration of suspended solids in wastewater. It is measured by filtering a sample of wastewater with a known volume. The filtered material is then dried at 105 degrees Celsius and weighed to calculate the MLSS concentration. There's also our mixed liquor volatile suspended solids, which is the concentration of the volatile suspended solids or the uh, matter that's considered a lye. Uh, it is measured in a similar fashion to MLSS. The dried filter material is put into a muffler furnace at 550 degrees Celsius, and the material that is burned off or volatilized away is considered the MLVSS. So these are some typical F to M ratios for different types of activated sludge. So a conventional activated sludge plant will have an F to M ratio of 0.25 to 0.5, and an extended aeration activated sludge plant will have an FTM ratio of 0.05 to 0.15. And this is because it has lowered lo loading rates. While a contact stabilization process will have an FTM ratio of 0.5 to 1. And this is because it's a sped up process that can handle much higher loading rates. So the FTM ratio can be calculated using the US customary system units, such as pounds or the SI system which is also known as the metric system using kilograms. Today, our example will, will cover the American standard system because of those are the units most typically used on certification exams. BOD loading is calculated as the food portion of the equation. And I'd encourage you to check out the recording for our webinar on loading, removal, and BOD math if you would like additional instruction on wastewater loading. The microorganism portion is also calculated a similar way, but we use the volume of the tank instead of the flow. F to M ratio is unitless, but you'll notice that after we cancel all our units, such as our milligrams per liter for our concentration of BOD, our milligrams per liter for our mixed liquor volatile suspended solids, that cancels out. I also cancel out the 8.3 conversion unit, even though this is how the equation is usually given on both sides, because it's the same thing. So we don't really need it in our final equation. 
we would calculate we would cancel the mil million gallons on the flow and the million gallons on the volume. So this would have a unit of per day, but this is considered unitless. And the reason is that the FTM is just the given FTM for a given day. So let's go ahead and take a look at a sample problem. The sample problem reads, you work at a wastewater treatment plant with a conventional treatment process that is having trouble meeting BOD compliance requirements. You suspect there may not be enough solids being retained in the activated sludge basins and decide to calculate the FTM ratio to check. You take a sample of the wastewater and provide it to the lab. Based on the following flow characteristics and lab results, what is the F to M ratio of the treatment plant? So our daily flow is 2.1 MGD. Our tank volume is 0.62 million gallons. Our BOD is 326 milligrams per liter. And then for the sample that we took, we took a typical sample volume of 300 milliliters. And the sample weight after drying was 549.6 milligrams. So this would be the weight of the material left on the filter. And the weight of the filter after baking at 550 degrees Celsius is 120.9 um, milligrams. So the first thing we need to do for this problem is we are given our results for our MLSS and our MLVSS. So in order to calculate this, we need to take our MLSS, MLVSS is equal to the MLSS minus whatever's left over after drying. So we have 149.6 milligrams minus 120.9 milligrams. So that'll give us the amount that was volatiles off the alive portion of our mixed liquor suspended solids. And then we divide that by our sample volume. It's given in 300 milliliters here, but we're gonna use liters. So 300 milliliters is equal to 0.3 liters. And when we subtract the difference and divide it by our volume, we get 1,429 milligrams per liter. So we're gonna carry that over to the next part of the problem. So as you can see here, I just added it to our knowns now. And to calculate our FTM ratio, now we just plug it into the previous problem. I'm sorry, not the previous problem. This will be the problem that we used at the beginning of the lesson. So this is gonna be our flow times our BOD over our volume times our M L D S S. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this smaller and move it to the corner, but then I'm gonna rewrite it and plug in our numbers. So we have 2.1 MGD times 326 milligrams per liter. And that's divided by 0.62 million gallons times 1,429 milligrams per liter. So first we're going to cancel out our units. Milligrams per liter cancels out on the top and the bottom. The MG's parts of the top and the bottom for a million gallons both cancels out. Now we're going to leave that day in there, but we're not going to use it in our units. And when we calculate this, we get 0.77. And if you remember from the beginning of our lesson, a conventional plant has between 0.25 and 0.5 for a F to M ratio. So here's the calculations over here. And as you can see that 0.77 is much greater than 0.5. So this is telling us that there is too much food going into the aeration basin and not enough microorganisms. So in this case, it may be beneficial to waste less solids um, in your secondary clarifiers and retain more solids in your aeration basins or your activated sludge basins in order to properly remove all the BOD. So that's it for today. And I would encourage you to take a look at all of our other 
webinars and educational videos that talks about concentrations and loadings in BOD. Um, and then also join us for our next video, which will be covering solids retention time. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.